us tonight is a PE teacher from Brisbane, but you probably know him best as the guy who beat Manny Pacquiao to become world champion. Would you please welcome Jeff Horn? Hi, welcome. Thank, thank you. All right. First things first, there are rumours that you are going to fight Anthony Mundine, and a little birdie told me that it is on. Mm -hmm. Right? How much do you get paid for a fight like that? That's a good question. I, if the fight happens, it would have to be up there because that would be the only reason why I'd be doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine if I had to spend 36 minutes with Anthony Mundine, I'd want to get paid a lot as well. <laughs> um, so is, it, is that what it comes down to? Is it, is it about the money? It's not just for a love of thumping hell through another person? Yeah, basically it's just the money for a fight like this because he's not in my weight division and... Um, a lot of people don't want me to do it anyway, but a lot of people do at the same time. Is that in Australia? Is that is he kind of the, like, does he pay the best to fight? I'd say he would be the the best person to fight for a payday for sure in Australia. I think he's the, the most well known boxer there is. Now this is you. <laughs> That's after a day at the office. <laughs> and I've got to ask, why do it? Yeah, look, um, I guess it pays well. <laughs> <laughs> No, when you win, it definitely is the, the best feeling in the world because um, it's just you. I suppose it's not a team event as well. You know all your hard work, all what you put into it, and you get the victory. Now, that picture was actually taken after you became world champion. You beat Manny Pacquiao, one of the greatest fighters of all time. You see here, amazing footage. You can see you are landing blows on this guy. 11-time world champion. You are getting in there. You are getting right on top of him. When it's happening, do you know it's going well? Like, does it feel good? Like, is it... Is yeah. it the same? Is it as good as when you nail a reverse park? Like, you just go, this is... I've done well here? Yeah, normally, because you're not getting punched in the face. <laughs> so, like, you normally go, well, I'm doing all right because he's not actually hitting me, and um, normally you're hitting them a lot more. So, you know, it's on them that they're getting hit. Now, you, you took the world title from him, uh, but you've said quite repeatedly that you want to fight him again. Why do you want to fight him again? Yeah, I would want to fight him again because the first time they had such a whinge about, oh, it's a, it was a hometown decision and things like that. So I was like, well, why not do it again? Do you think he will? Has he, has he indicated that he, he would ever fight you again? No, I think he's... Running kind of... scared is what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I guess he didn't enjoy the first time round and, um, yeah, he's not happy about it. He wasn't happy and he doesn't want to probably do it again. It's, it's interesting that the stories that build up around fights. I remember when um, Manny Pacquiao fought um, Mayweather and it was, at the time, the biggest fight ever, $500 million purse. And the media really sold that as good versus evil. Manny Pacquiao was good and May that Mayweather was evil. Is that how you saw it? Yep. Yep. I definitely liked, especially back then, Pacquiao a lot more than uh, Floyd Mayweather just because of how he acts and how he treats people. I, I just don't like how he kind of goes around, but... Uh, Pacquiao is an absolute gentleman and a guy, and I still think that today. And so, how about if you fight Mundine? Is that good versus evil as well? Is well, that... I guess that's up the public to to their opinion of it. I guess. So no, but really, what do you think? Right? <laughs> no, seriously though, because I'm going to put a lot of money on it. Um, <laughs> do you, what do you reckon? Look, got Mundine... him in four. You could, you could, you oh, could drop I, him in I... four, surely. Well, I'd hope. I hope I can beat him, at least, that's for sure. But Come on, I want to hear more than that. <laughs> Look, he's, he's definitely a good boxer. He's, he's, not, he's no chump, that's for sure. So I definitely wouldn't be taking him lightly if I was to fight him. I want to talk about another fight. You were, you were world champion for about a year, and then you fought Terence Crawford in Las Vegas. This was a very different fight. Now, he, you, you can see here, this footage is great. He's, he's very quick, and he lands a lot of punches. What are you thinking when, when someone is, is that quick and landing that many hits? Just frustration. I was just like, come on, I've got to, got to hit this guy. I've got to get him. And um, I guess me just coming forward, I wasn't kind of thinking of the strategy that I'd planned with the coach, uh, Glenn, all along about how I was meant to be moving a lot. And I was just standing in front of him, just getting punched. That's it, really. <laughs> now, I, I, I read a comment that your coach once, he said you were a great fighter because you've got a great jaw. What did he mean by that? <laughs> He means that I can take a punch. <laughs> <laughs> when that's going on, do you feel pain? Uh, yeah, to an extent, like, I guess the adrenaline uh, pumping, but the thing that hurts the most in the fights is actually the head clashes because there's absolutely no give in that. Uh, the gloves at least have that little bit of padding, but the, if you go smack bang into someone else's head with yours, they, they're the ones that kill. And is there ever a point when you're frustrated, when you feel like he's landing more, more hits than, than you are, do you ever start to doubt yourself? Does, there, does a voice of doubt 
come in. Yeah, they do. And I did definitely had that in the last fight and I had that in the Manny Pacquiao fight as well. But I was able to get myself out of the Manny Pacquiao and go, well, no, I, I can win this. And I'm, if I this is what I dreamed of all along to become world champion. And I just pushed through that round nine where I had a tough round with him and was able to go really hard the last few. Um, it was a bit different in this one, and I think they stopped it pretty quickly when he started to land a few punches. Now, you, you obviously, you lost the title to Terence Crawford in, in that fight. How do you feel straight after that happens? Um, I hate losing. So even if you play me in a board game or something, I hate losing. Just ask my wife. But, um, yeah, especially in something I've trained weeks and weeks and weeks for um, uh, in training preparation, just hard yards, and then to lose it, because there's, if you're not first, you're last in boxing, and it's just, it's just extremely frustrating. It's the first time I've lost in, I don't know, five years or something in the in the professional ranks. Do you ever worry what this does to your brain? Yes, I do. I, I definitely um, don't like getting punched in the head, and they're the head clashes are the ones that you can feel the most when you hit. You just feel your whole head kind of go through like a pins and needles feeling. But um, I definitely hate that feeling, and I don't like getting punched in the head. <laughs> but at the same time, you, you have said you were a former PE teacher and you have said that you think boxing... Yeah, it, happened, it happened a lot less than teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I think after all of this, I'd respect you than I did my PE teacher. But I, I'm curious, you're a PE teacher and you've said that, that boxing should be taught at schools. Yeah, I think just for confidence-wise, not necessarily to fight, but just, like, boxer size and things like that, just gives kids, like, massive amounts of confidence and... Because their confidence is up, they don't tend to go looking for trouble. Now, you have a daughter. She's about six months old. Yep. So if your daughter came to you and said she wanted to take up boxing, obviously it's early days yet, but, um, <laughs> but if your daughter came to you and said she wanted to become a professional boxer, what would you say? I would say I wouldn't want her to be a professional boxer, but I suppose anything in life is her decision, what she wants to do, and I know my wife would absolutely kill me if she heard me even talking about this. <laughs> it's, it's really cool, because you can walk into a ring with some of the toughest people in the world and you are still scared of your wife. Yep. I can see that in your <laughs> eyes right now. <laughs> that just went through your head. I could see it. She keeps telling me, she keeps reminding me all the time that, no, I do not want our daughter to have anything to do with boxing. Um, I was like, it, it'll be good self-defence, though, just in case a guy tries to kiss her. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does your wife ever wish you did something else? Uh, no, she's, she's pretty happy with how everything's done. I think uh, the, the further along my career I get, she kind of goes, well, when do you want to give it up? Like, when's the time you're going to say that's enough? And when is that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, when, when I get sick of it, when I feel like... Um, I really feel like you hate your job at that point, I'll go, well, I don't, definitely don't want to do it anymore. Now, um, I, there's a couple of things I want to I want to attend to that I think are quite important. I want to help your career a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, one thing is you've got this fight coming up with Mundine, and I just think you're too nice. <laughs> all right, I think you're too pleasant. He won't shut up. So I think you need to work on your smack talk. All right. All right. So I've I've got some smack talk here yep. on the card. Now, now that's your camera up there. Yeah. I want you to just give it to Anthony Mundine. Don't all hold right. back. Uh, you're too old to fight me. You'll never. You'll need a ramp to get it into the ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I mean, I don't think you believed it enough. Let's, <laughs> let's see how we go with the next one. You'll do your hip getting through the rope. Nice. <laughs> That's good. You should change your name to Anthony the Old Man Monday. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Now we're talking. All right. I'm a teacher and I'll give you a real physical education. <laughs> it almost sounded romantic then. So I just... <laughs> the next one. All right. This fight will be over quicker than your time on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Yeah, there it is. That is good. Right. Now, the other thing I want to ask about is, is merchandising, all right? Because George Foreman, he, he made a lot of money boxing, but he made a lot more when he released the George Foreman grill. Do you, <laughs> do you have an appliance? I don't have an appliance. Right. No. Now you do. What do you reckon? Because I went with something, like, it's, it's food-based, right, because that's a winner. Yeah. But it's also very Aussie, all right? I went with the sandwich toaster, the Jeffelion. Oh. oh! There we go. <laughs> There's the Jeffelion. Every, every toasty is a knockout. I mean, this cannot fail. 15%. That's Jeff all I ask. <laughs> all I ask is 15%. What do you reckon? Is that an option? Yeah, I guess so. I genuinely think you would sell a lot of I've never of them. seen myself on a package like this, so... Oh, it suits you. I think it really <laughs> does suit you. Well, all the best training up for the fight if and when it happens. Good luck. Is it going to happen? I don't know. Come on. 
I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but all the best training up for the fight. Thanks so much for coming on the weekly. Thank you. Give it up for Jeff